Welcome to the first episode of Linux Customization 101. In this series, I will teach you all I know about Linux customization and tweaking to make your Linux experience your very own. Each episode of this series is completely standalone, so that you can watch one or another depending on what you want to learn. For a better fruition of this video, I will leave a link to the Linux Customization 101 playlist down in the description. Before starting, I want to say something ahead of time. If you have any question about what you see on video or about other videos I made previously, please ask me on Twitter as YouTube comments are really particularly bad and I find it pretty difficult to answer them all and keep track of them. So please, if you have to ask something, please use Twitter. You will find a link to my Twitter profile down in the description. So with no further ado, let's start this first episode of Linux Customization 101, Desktop Environment. Let's check it out. So the first step to start customizing your Linux desktop is choosing what desktop environment to use. But what is a desktop environment, you may ask? Now, this is what any operating system looks like without a desktop environment. If you're used to Windows or Mac OS, you probably didn't know this, but every operating system has a desktop environment. It's just that Windows and Mac OS have one default desktop environment and you cannot change that so that you just think it's part of the operating system itself. So a desktop environment is a software or a set of softwares that lets you interact graphically with your operating system and allow you to do your basic operations like browsing the web, watching videos, writing documents and whatnot. The thing with Linux is that you have the possibility to choose what desktop environment to use, but before choosing, you actually have to know the alternatives, don't you? So the list of desktop environments in Linux is pretty extensive, but really they can be divided in three big categories. Qt-based desktop environments, GDK-based desktop environments, and window managers. So Qt-based desktop environments use the Qt framework for drawing the user interface. What is the Qt framework? It's basically a set of software that allows a programmer to make a graphical user interface. So of course, you can build a whole desktop environment on top of that. GDK is basically another kind of framework that basically allows you to do the same thing. What's different between these two toolkits or frameworks is all about how they work on the low level and what the design guidelines say. And finally, there are window managers that are kind of a whole different kind of beast. When I'm talking about window managers, I, I'm talking about iTree window manager, awesome window manager, xmonad, maybe. Those are a different approach on a desktop environment. They are desktop environments, but they are more designed for people who is willing to use a terminal and for people who want to do things manually. Since to tweak a window manager, you actually have to edit the configuration files by yourself. Now, I, won't, I won't talk about window managers in this video because if you want to use a window manager, you probably already know what it is and you probably know how to use it or, or you are willing to learn. Overall, they're designed for more advanced users and they are out of the scope of this video. So now that we have these two categories of desktop environments, we can talk about actual desktop environments. So the two most important desktop environments out there are probably KDE and GNOME 3 or GNOME Shell. KDE is based on Qt and GNOME 3 is based on GTK. There are a lot of differences between these two desktop environments, and I will start off by talking about KDE. KDE is kind of a more traditional approach to desktops and is highly customizable, and it's more easily customizable than other desktop environments. On KDE, you have panels that you can attach to one of the four edges of your screen, and you have widgets that you can place or on the panels or on the desktop itself. The whole thing about KDE is the extreme customizability. You can use the default KDE, but if you really want to make sure you're getting all you want from KDE, you have to customize it yourself. You can explore through the widgets, install new ones, and basically arrange them in your desktop as you want them to be. About applications, KDE applications are kind of more advanced and more feature rich. This, for example, is Dolphin. KD file manager. Dolphin is really complete as a software. It's got all the fancy features that you may possibly need, and it's really highly customizable. You can rearrange the widgets position, the various panels, and practically everything about the, the application is customizable. And this is the baseline that KDE apps usually follow. On the other hand, we have GNOME 3 or GNOME Shell. 
it's basically the same thing, two names for the same thing. The thing about GNOME Shell is that you have less customizability, but a better out of the box experience, kind of. <laughs> so by default on GNOME Shell, you have a top panel that shows information about your app, date and time and a system tray. And then you have a launcher on the left side of the screen accessible in the activities overview that basically allows you to see what's going on in your screen. So your open apps on your, on your current screen and workspace. And on the left, you have the launcher I, I talked about before. And on the right, you have your workspaces. The thing about Gnome Tree is that it's more static. This means that what you see is probably the only thing you're gonna get. The main way to customize Gnome Shell is using extensions. Extensions are like softwares that tell Gnome to take a different shape. There are extensions for many things and they can do anything from tweaking a little thing about Gnome Shell that you don't like or that you like better another way to changing completely what Gnome Shell looks like. If you want to know more about Gnome Shell extensions, I made a separate video about it. It's called top five Gnome Shell extensions. I will probably leave a card on the top right corner here in the video. So if you want to check it out, press on that and go watch that video, then get back and keep watching this video. About GTK apps, they are usually more simple than KDE or Qt apps. They usually have a limited set of features per app and they only have the basics of what you need from your applications. So remember Dolphin, now this instead is Nautilus. Nautilus is GNOME default file manager. And as you can see, it's a lot simpler and it has a lot less features, but this doesn't mean it's bad. The lack of features in some way may make you more productive in the mean that you just see what you need. So you see your files, your thumbnails, and then on the left side, you have your favorites. Straightforward, easy. It's a matter of personal preference, but I really prefer the GNOME approach to the desktop. So we talked about the two most important desktop environments out there, but there are actually other desktop environments that are really worth mentioning. So let's start saying that Qt doesn't have many desktop environments like GTK has. So there are actually some um, new desktop environments that are being developed currently that are written in Qt, but they're not really ready for prime time. The most important ones that came to my mind are Ubuntu Unity 8, which is the new Ubuntu Unity graphical user interface that's gonna ship on the next Ubuntu 16.04, probably, and on the Ubuntu Touch phones and tablets. And then there is Papyrus Shell. Papyrus Shell is um, kind of weird in a good way. Papyrus wants to bring material design to the Linux desktop in a very elegant way. They practically rebuilt the material framework from the ground up based on Qt QML. They are both very cool projects, especially Papyrus Shell, but they're they are both really young and you're probably not gonna be able to use any of these two. So again, out of the scope of this video. But there are other desktop environments that are really good and they are based on GTK that are really worth mentioning. So the first thing that comes to my mind is Mate. Mate or Mate, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, it's M-A-T-E, Mate or Mate. Anyway, this desktop environment is basically a fork of the old GNOME 2. Yes, because when GNOME 3 first came out, there was a lot of discussion in the Linux community because GNOME 3 was a completely different approach to the desktop compared to what GNOME 2 used to offer. So Mate is basically just GNOME 2. You have a panel on the top that has applications, places, and system, I think. Yeah, system, administration, what, something like that. And then on the right of the panel, you have like uh, your system tray, so all that stuff. And then on the bottom, you have a taskbar so that you can uh, actually see the applications that are running and switch between the windows. And it's kind of like more Windows XP if you want to make this comparison, but not quite. 
the thing about Mate is that it's really highly customizable. It's kind of like what KDE offers so that you have uh, those widgets that you can place on the panels and you can do make multiple panels. And there are even some third-party widgets that are worth noticing, like uh, a widget for having something like a dock on panel. And if you like simple stuff and, or you're running a lower-end machine or an older machine, you probably want to check out Mate or Mate. Then there is Cinnamon. It's kind of similar to Mate, but more modern. Cinnamon is developed by the Linux Mint community and it's a pretty simple interface for people that are transitioning from Windows. So you have a menu button, sort of like a start button on the bottom left corner of the panel and then you have your taskbar and your system tray on the right. It's simple, it's based on GNOME tree and it's really beautiful. So if you come from Windows or you're looking for a simple, easy to start with desktop environment, maybe Cinnamon is what you're looking for. Then there is another interesting desktop environment that's called Pantheon Shell. Pantheon Shell is the desktop environment built by the Elementary OS team. It's really beautiful, actually. Um, not as practical as beautiful, but it's beautiful. It's kind of similar to GNOME Tree, but simpler, and in some way it tries to mimic macOS user interface. Not completely, but the inspiration is quite clear. It has a main dock on the bottom and a panel on the top that has an application menu, a system tray, date and time on the middle, kind of like GNOME Tree, but simpler and even less customizable. Then there are lightweight desktop environments. The thing about lightweight desktop environments is that Linux is accessible to everyone. So if you're using a really old machine or a really underpowered machine, for instance, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, then your best hope is using something like LXD or XFCE. Even Mate can fall in this category, but its original intention was not to be lightweight, but it was to be similar to GNOME 2. So LXD and XFC are the two probably lightest desktop environments out there. LXD is ugly. <laughs> it's plain ugly. It's quite customizable. You can make LXD look pretty cool. But um, the thing about LXD is that it's not designed to be cool. It's designed to be ultra lightweight. So there are some apps done by the LXD team like, like LeafPod and LX Terminal that are really light and really easy on your system resources so that you can enjoy using Linux and doing your everyday stuff and tasks even on an old or underpowered machine. XFC on the other hand is prettier, I'd wanna say. XFC, um, it's weird because it has a kind of GNOME 2-ish interface by default, but the thing about XFC is that it is highly customizable. Kind of like KDE again, but even more because it's uh, it's kind of made of building blocks so that you can rearrange them and make your very own desktop environment based on what XFC provides by default. So again, panels, widgets, there are really called applets, but call, talking about applets and widgets is probably the same thing. So panels, widgets, and your creativity, I wanna say. And then last, we have Ubuntu Unity. If you have ever used Ubuntu, you're probably familiar with this kind of user interface. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's based on, well, it was originally based on GNOME 3, but um, it's just a simple, standard user interface for the average user that doesn't want to tweak or doesn't know how to tweak his desktop environment. I didn't want to include this desktop environment in my video at the first time, but I have to because it's one of the most popular desktop environments out there, just because it is bundled in the most popular distro out there, Ubuntu. So guys, I know this video may be kind of overwhelming for the first video, but the thing about Linux customization is that you have to start from the ground up to build a really, really personal and, and fine-tuned experience, or you just use defaults. So the thing you have to do now is 
First of all, try Gnome Tree and KDE. Then you decide which one of the two you like. When you have a general idea on how a desktop environment works, you can start exploring other desktop environments. So you can start trying Mate, you can start trying Cinnamon, Pantheon, maybe Pantheon, the best way to try it is using Elementary OS. And after you're done with this, you can choose which one you prefer of all of them. And after you've done this, you can choose which one you prefer and start using it on your main machine. Now to try all these desktop environments, the best solution is probably using virtual machines. So you just download and install VirtualBox and um, a good distribution to try all desktop environments is Antergos. Antergos, um, which I made a review of it some time ago, uh, you will find a card here again, this in this area here, kind of. So Antergos is basically an Arch-based distribution that has a pretty easy installation process. But the great thing about Antergos is that when you install it, it asks you what desktop environment you want to choose so that you don't have to install the desktop environment after the installation is done. This way you can spin multiple Antergos installations and try all the desktop environments for yourself and decide which one you prefer. So guys, it's gonna wrap up this first episode of Linux Customization 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know it was a little boring, but it was an accessory introduction to begin with this series. So the next episode is gonna be a little more interesting, actually a lot more interesting, but I don't wanna spoil anything. So thanks for watching, leave a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want more of this. And I will be seeing you in the next episode of Linux Customization 101.